Hello dear students today in this video i am going to talk about chapter number 7 that is the necklace which is written by guy d mopasad so let us start so before starting with the chapter let's discuss a little about the author first of all mopasad grew up with wealthy parents in northwest france and he spent almost every sunday with the great french novelist gustave flaubert who inspired him to begin writing and in his teenage years he served in the franco prussian war he got promoted to become a government clerk and he spent most of his free time writing between 1880 and 1890 mopasand has successfully written 300 short stories, six novels, three travel books, and his only volume of verse. A lot of his stories were about inexplicable, illogical, and contradictory catastrophes. Also, many of his stories were humorous and warm-hearted. Guy de Maupassant is one of the most indispensable authors of French literature, and thanks to his great many short stories like this one, that is the necklace. Let us talk about the theme of this chapter. We are having two major themes and those are true value is not always apparent and never look for happiness in the material things. Now let's talk about the elements of the story in which we'll be talking about characters and setting. Let's talk about the characters first of all. So basically we are having five main characters uh, which are Madam Mathilde Loisel, Madam Jenny Forestier, cabinet officials, Monsieur Loisel and the jeweler. So let's talk about the setting of this chapter. This chapter, the story of this chapter is set in Paris, that is France in the late 1800s. Now, in this slide I'm going to discuss about the plot structure of the story. As you all know that whenever we are going to discuss about the plot structure, we need to discuss four major things. and what are those exposition rising action climax and resolution and in this story also we are having all these so let's talk about exposition exposition occurs when the husband introduces the invitation to the reception and this is where you get a perspective of the characters and their personality traits that is madam loisel and her husband are introduced over here Let's talk about the rising action of the chapter now. This happens when Madam Loisel borrows the necklace from Madam Forestier, and this also includes Madam Loisel purchasing the dress and couple going to the reception. Now, next is climax. Climax happens when Madam Loisel loses the necklace and they replace it with a similar necklace. When Madam Loisel and her husband purchase the new necklace, they have debt. in which they take 100 years to pay for and resolution of the chapter is this that madam loisel finds out the necklace is worthless after finally paying it off and telling the truth to madam forestier now let's talk about the events as we all know that the main character of the story is madam mathilde loisel only so she is a kind of lady who is never ever happy with whatsoever she is having so she is in her apartment dreaming of a better life and she is unhappy and dissatisfied with her social status and mediocre surroundings and one day what happens her husband that is mr loisel announced that they'll be attending a ball party but madam loisel felt very unhappy because she would look poor because she thought that she has nothing to wear and no gown nor fine jewelries so she borrowed a diamond necklace to madam forestier and she enjoyed the night dancing and meeting people all around while her husband was alone sleeping in an anteroom now let's talk about the plot at home she felt her neck and realized she lost the borrowed necklace and mr loisel went back to the streets to look for the necklace but he was unfortunate and the couple decided to buy the 36000 francs diamond necklace they thought looks the same with the borrowed necklace and they worked so hard and they suffered much just to pay for their debts and to buy the necklace 
Wonder what happens when Madame Loisel saw Madame Forrester. She told her about the lost necklace. Then Madame Forrester laughed and she told her that it was just a fancy jewellery which cost only 500 francs. So this is all about the story and we are having in this slide a little bit about the exposition scene, how it looked like, then conflict, then rising action, then climax, then falling action and then resolution. Now let's talk about the characters in nutshell, how this lady called Matilda Lois looks like. She's a very pretty lady and she's married with a clerk. And she is actually dissatisfied with whatever she, she is having. That's why such kind of characters are given to her. Like she is selfish, she is dissatisfied, she is unhappy and she is jealous too. Let's talk about Mr. Loisel who is Matilda's husband. He is the husband of Matilda and, uh, and he's, he's an ordinary clerk and he always and always tries to please his wife as he is a caring man. So he is practical, he is hard working, he is very much loyal to, her wife, to his wife and he is working as a clerk. Let's talk about Madame Forrester now. She's a good friend of Matilda and she's helpful and very much considerate also. That's why she lent Matilda a necklace that leads to her ruin. So what about Madame Forrester? She is wealthy, she is generous, she is kind and she is very much trusting also. So let us talk about the symbols which are used by the author in this chapter. Necklace. Necklace is the symbol of greed. It's a symbol of desire for what one cannot have. Differences in the social classes. Dishonesty. Because Madame Loisel's fakeness or the want of material things. Because necklace is majorly concerned with Matilda Loisel only because it was the cause of her ruin. Whatever has happened with her, it was just because of the necklace only. Let's talk about the next symbol that is wrap. It is Madam Stations in Life and it is the symbol of insecurity and embarrassment. Now let's talk about dress. Dress, it's a symbol which has been used by the author to represent Madam Loisel's sacrifice for his wife. It's not Madam Loisel, sorry, it's Mr. Loisel's sacrifice for his wife because he had saved some money for his personal wishes and he gave that money to his wife for the purpose of buying the dress. Now these two slides which I am going to discuss with you, these are having a few lines which will be ultimately giving you some of the idea that these lines were said by whom. So this slide is having four lines whereas another slide is also having some of the lines. So go through these slides carefully. Now let's talk about something which we need to think upon. Who are the victims of the story? If you were Matilda, what would you do after you have known the necklace is missing? Now give your opinion about Matilda replacing the necklace secretly. So whatever, because we have discussed the chapter in detail. So whatever you think about these two things which I have told you that, uh, just think about who are the victims of the story and if you would have been on the place of Matilda, what you would have done. So this is your personal thing which you need to think upon and you need to write in, in your notebooks. Now let's talk about the irony of the chapter. Irony is the Loisels lives, live on the street of martyrs and end up making a 10 year long sacrifice. This is verbal irony. And Madame Loisel borrows a necklace that makes her feel beautiful and wealthy and it turns out to be a fake one. And this is situational irony. So now certain things are underlined or focused by the author which should be understood by the students that these were the main points which we need to focus upon. These are the themes and some of the themes are, I have jotted down over here out of which first is honesty is the best policy. The theme of the necklace is about honesty and telling the truth and the author is trying to stress the importance of telling the truth. Next thing is the best things in life are for free. 
and the best and most wonderful things in the in this world are free and we we actually can't buy happiness this relates happiness because happiness is something which we can't buy with money it comes free next is live within your means that is whatever you are having you should be contented enough with all those things and it's all about the contentment of what you are having people should learn to be happy and thankful of what they have and if they want more they should work harder to achieve it there should be no shortcut which should be adopted so with this i have finished thank you so much for joining